Hi, I'm Benjamin Dumpster, and I'm the community lead here at Player First Games. We've got some exciting announcements for your favorite platform brawler, Multiverses. WB has a laundry list of amazing characters at their disposal, from wacky cartoon characters to powerful wizards and mighty warriors, and that's why we are excited to announce today that the next character joining the Multiverses roster is Gizmo from the smash hit pop culture icon Gremlins. Hey, uh, I don't think the teenagers and early 20-somethings that are going to be playing this even know what Gremlins is, man. Yeah, well, we don't pay you to think, so why don't you just shut your trap and work the boom like you're supposed to? There's no boom. You're wearing the microphone. Go get me a coffee. And if you thought that was exciting, wait till you hear about our next character, also from Gremlins, Stripe. Why don't we just put like Harry Potter or Gimli or somebody cool in the game? You know what, why don't we just put your mom in the game? Oh wait, we can't. She's too big, she'd take up the whole screen. Isn't Iron Giant in the game? He's supposed to be like 100 feet tall, that joke doesn't even work. Yeah, well that just goes to show how fat she is. Next, we'll be adding fan favorite Marvin the Martian. What's the matter, you don't got something smart to say about that one, huh? I don't really have to say anything, just look at the screen. Oh. Do you think we should have done the Velma crossover? No. Zoinks! It's the gay blade! Multiverses, the Super Smash Bros. clone with Warner Brothers characters that somehow, even though it's been months and months after launch, still doesn't really feel like a finished game. Whether it's the unpolished visuals, the weird roster of characters, the maps that are incredibly boring and forgettable, or the horrible balancing issues, um, there is a lot to dislike about this game. At its core, it's a platform brawler. Every character can do regular attacks, special attacks, they can dodge, Oh, and that's, that's actually it, really. There aren't any smash attacks, uh, only a few of the characters have grab attacks, and the game just has this kind of weird, floaty feeling about it that just makes it feel not finished. Don't get me wrong, I mean, I had an okay time playing my first, you know, 10 matches or so, and I can see having a good time with the boys on the couch with this, but I can also see having a better time with the boys on the couch with Smash Ultimate. Or just the boys. The game does have some free rotating characters that change every two to three weeks, I think, and you can unlock characters either by earning in-game currency by playing the game, or by purchasing currency or tickets through the different editions of the game. The game doesn't really seem to want you to unlock characters by just playing though, because wow, talk about grinding. See, like I said, you can earn in-game currency by just playing, but even that is pretty frustrating because you have to do a lot of challenges if you want to get things at, you know, any kind of decent rate. And even then, when you do the challenges, it's still pretty grindy. Some of the challenges you get are things like like, win a match with a character you literally don't even own. So if you don't have that character and you don't feel like buying it, you have to grind to unlock that character to grind that challenge. Uh, now yes, some of the challenges are easy things like taunt twice at the beginning of a match or toast a player 10 times, which is basically this game's built-in equivalent of saying, good game. If you wanted to just unlock things by having fun and playing the game your way, you will be sorely disappointed because that's not happening. Now once again, like most of my videos, a significant metric that I have at my disposal to determine how many people are playing the game is Steam Charts. Now yes, I know, this is a multi-platform game and it's got crossplay and everything, so Steam is just one chunk of the player base. I get that. But if you're telling me right now that Steam has lost over 99% of its player base and yet every other platform somehow is like untouched and is thriving and doing just great, you're delusional. Every platform has the same issues, the same complaints, so why would Xbox and PlayStation be seemingly different and certainly not Switch, if this game even is on Switch, because if I'm on Switch, I'm playing Smash. Here's another metric I have. Twitch, the main website that everybody goes to to watch people stream games. Okay, so Twitch Tracker says that at its peak, 
there were 180,000 people watching multiverses. That's a lot of people. It's 300 now. Uh, so the viewership on Twitch is doing even worse than the player base. Mmm, uh-oh. If you've watched any of my other videos, you'll know that this isn't as bad as some of the other games I've talked about. Rocket Arena, Roller Champions, uh, Knockout City. Yes, these games have done much worse and have even fewer players than multiverses right now. However, those games didn't have WB money. Multiverses does. And properties. We're talking about a company that has rights to some of the most influential and famous IPs ever. Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, Game of Thrones, Looney Tunes, those four right there. That How much money have those properties made? How much influence do those have? Rain Dog? I mean, I know they thought they needed a reason to tie the multiverse together, and uh, Rain Dog, I think, is the, the gimmick, the thing that is pulling all these worlds together. He's the... I don't really know, I don't care about the lore, but I'm pretty sure he's just the stand-in for like, here's why all these characters are together. We didn't need that, and I don't care about him. I mean, I, like, what, what are you looking at? Huh? Okay, so let's move past, you know, the, the properties and all the talk of that. Let's talk about the gameplay, which, in my opinion, is a little too simple and unpolished to really have any kind of longevity or competitive scene. I can't imagine some Smash Pro picking up this game and being like, yeah, I'm gonna do this instead of Smash. Mm -mm. Super Smash Bros. is really fun and exciting to watch people be good at. I mean, there's so much depth to the Smash games that the average person you might not know about, but they, there's a lot of depth in these games. There's a lot of things to master, to become good at. And multiverses just looks like, like who can out jank the other person? Who can abuse this broken buggy mess the best? And that's the winner. That's not fun to watch. I mean, if you want to play on baby mode, you can just play as Finn or Superman. I'm pretty sure both of those characters have been nerfed multiple times, but are still hated by like everybody that plays the game. Iron Giant is so broken that, yeah, you can juggle him pretty well, but he can also zero to death you in three hits. Um, uh, uh, yeah, that doesn't seem right. Uh, I quickly realized after I started playing and, you know, getting into match after match after match, that uh, it was just all blurring together. It's just the same matches. The maps all basically look the same. The music sounds like stock music that they just ripped for free out of some library. It just, something about, they, it just feels unfinished. And I mean, the stages and the stage hazards are so boring. They're like barely even there. I mean, you compare it to its main competitor, Smash Bros. Look, you didn't even have a chance. Not even a chance. They had to come in here, guns a blazing, and they did not have enough guns to be a blazing. I mean, Smash looks better, it plays better, it sounds better, it feels better, but none of that even really needs to be said at this point. Things like, you know, feedback, on screen effects, game feel, sound effect, all that stuff goes such a long way to cement Super Smash Bros. as one of the best series ever created. It's truly special when you look into all the little tiny things that make Smash what it is. And Multiverses just has none of that. None of it. The characters all feel like they have no weight or whatever weight they do have doesn't seem like it matches the character that they are. Even attacks that seemingly do a large amount of, you know, damage to the other player, they don't feel like they have the impact that they should. They don't feel punchy. They don't, they just, I feel like I'm just playing with a bunch of action figures smacking each other. That's, that's what it feels like. It doesn't, something just feels off. It's not really describable, but if you play Smash and then you play Multiverses, you know what I mean. Smash has some of the best game feel ever, and Multiverses feels like a cheap mobile game, to put it lightly. 
Doesn't help that it also looks like one. <laughs> Look, I don't hate multiverses, and I don't hate any game that tries to be a platform brawler or to, you know, copy any part of the Smash Bros formula. I think competition breeds innovation, which is exactly what the gaming industry needs in a sea of remakes, remasters, reboots, and sequels. But for a company to throw this money, talent, and assets at this game and have it just be so 2% milk, it's just sad. Not even, it's like skim milk, it's like water milk. What I'm trying to say is the game could have been so much more with more care and probably more time. It, it probably needed a little bit more time in the oven if I'm being honest. That's one of these things with these games, they come out and they're not finished and they get a bunch of publicity and a bunch of players all at the start and then everyone realizes that the game wasn't finished and they stop playing and then they never go back to it. Even when it does, you know, feel finished, this game will never have that many players again. It will never have as much attention as it had when it launched. No way. Gizmo? Who asked for Giz- some- some 65-year-old executive asked for Gizmo? Don't, I, I don't- I don't dislike gremlins or anything, but come on. A platform brawler? In 2020- when did the, get, the game come out? 2022? Gremlins? Instead of Harry Potter? Lord of the Rings? The original trailer was goofy and fun. I mean, the, the Ultra Instinct Shaggy stuff was kind of funny, albeit a little bit late to the party. There are good ideas, and the game is serviceable. It is not a bad game. Most of the games I cover on here are not bad games, just mismanaged. If I were a betting man, I would say that we'll get another season of multiverses. Maybe they'll add a character that people actually care about. Maybe two. Um, and then the game will shut down just in time for the one year anniversary. Or maybe it'll make it like a year and a half, but I honestly don't think it'll last two years. I don't think it'll last two full years. I'm being pretty cynical, but that given all the shutdown announcements and stuff that we've seen lately, it seems like the writing is on the wall. One day, somebody will make a platform brawler that isn't a Smash game, and it will be awesome, and it will be polished, and it will feel great to play, and it will be alive for years. Multiverses, unfortunately, is just not that game. And I don't think it ever will be. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Hope you liked the video, if indeed you've made it this far. Make sure you like, comment, you subscribe, and you ring the bell so you never miss another video, short or stream, from yours truly. In case you missed it, I started a whole new series on the channel called Wide Open Worlds, where I talk about, in depth, the open worlds of open world games. Uh, what makes them fun, traversing them, the contents of them, not focusing on the story of the game so much, or the writing, or anything outside of that, just focusing on the actual open world of the open world games. You know, the important part. I started off with a video about Forspoken and its open world, Athia. Make sure you go watch that video if you haven't already. I'll link it right now. Next video that's coming out for that series is about Sunset Overdrive, and I'm currently streaming that game on my channel Tuesdays and Thursdays at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and Sundays at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So make sure you tune into those and watch me play that. And make sure you stay tuned for the next video where I eat the lint out of my belly button. Stay tuned.